Hello, a heartfelt welcome to all my fellow engineers. My name is Meer Patel, and today we are going to discuss on piping and instrumentation diagrams, PNIDs in chemical process industry, part one. Now, a brief introduction of myself. Uh, I'm a chemical engineer with a master's degree from USA. Along with that, I have a PMP as well as a TV school certified functional safety professional certificate. I have more than 35 years experience in the chemical process industry and uh, I have uh, tutored and mentored many process engineers. Uh, with God's grace, I have authored Mies and Book of Chemical Process Engineering and I worked in many premium consultancy firms during the course of my career. Now uh, the uh, PNID is a very important topic. Uh, it is the core of a chemical en engineer's job as a process engineer. It's a core document and uh, I thought it prudent to include many many details in this document and uh, that's why it has been broken up into three parts. Today's webinar is on part one where we are going to have the introduction, types of process plans, project types and stages, all of which influence the PNID, then input documents and PNID software layout, piping, items and instrumentation. Uh, part 2 and part 3 will be separate webinars. Now we'll start with the introduction to PNIDs. Now the participating engineer should be familiar with what is a chemical process plan and what is the significance of a PNID document. And nevertheless, we will cover PNID in total depth since it is one of the most crucial documents a process engineer produces in process engineering. What are the learning objectives? The module covers the following, which is introduction to PNID, types of plants in CPI, types of stages in engineering, input documents, and details of the PNIDs. We will cover each and every one of these and in the sample PNIDs I have covered many many PNIDs and I will explain that is part 3 each and every type of PNID for example column PNID what what things are there etc so that the engineer understands and can use that knowledge for his future reference. Now types of process plans so now uh, uh, this uh, types of process plans why we are covering here uh, basically uh, each and every type of process plant has a specific requirement. Like for example, uh, you may have a, a, a coal handling plant where you have material handling equipments. So uh, there the material handling equipments are vendor items. Uh, so the representation and PNID is also there from the vendor perspective. And uh, you have a oil and gas where, uh, for example, uh, all the equipments are procured separately. Uh, pumps are there, tanks are there, pipelines are there. So uh, here the representation also is slightly different. So it is important process engineer understands types of plants also. Now here we start with uh, definition of plant processes. Continuous plant where it is a refinery and a batch plant for example you may have a pharma plant, you may have a small scale industry plant. Uh, so the process engineer has to understand each and every uh, one of the uh, uh, different uh, plants and uh, the PNID also has to show the uh, references wherever required. Uh, for example, uh, in, a, in a polymerization plant uh, or in the pharma plant as is shown in the slide, you have batch reactions occurring in this reactor. So that means the additives has to be dosed also batch wise into these and a particular sequence has to be established. So in the PNID, this uh, sequence has to be also covered in the notes section of the PNID. Uh, so that it is not missed out and the further documents like control narratives etc uh, cover this part also. Uh, whereas in a continuous uh, plant for example a refinery uh, such sort of notes may not be uh, required because it is a continuously 24 hours it's operating as compared to a batch plant. Then type diversity of chemical plants. Here uh, we have uh, I have tried to cover the continuous plants, what are the various plants falling in this category, typical and the batch type of plants, what are the different type of batch type of plants. 
just for the understanding of the chemical engine of the uh, uh, participating process engineer so this small scale industry is written here in the bottom okay. this is a special type of industry because it has <laughs> it has many many types of permutations and combinations uh, you may have a plant which can produce multiple products you may have a plant which is running for uh, let's say 12 hours a day shutting down 12 hours so uh, here the uh, startup shutdown all these things also has to be considered by the process engineer now project types and stages in cpi so here for example uh, i have covered all this uh, in depth in other webinars also and nevertheless i'll just touch upon it here since uh, it is relevant to the pnid topic uh, now following types of uh, types of project contracts usually made in the cpi cost plus c reimbursable epcm epc and pmc okay so, uh, so basically uh, 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 cost plus pre reimbursable maybe for a feed type uh, feed type job for example okay epcm may be a detail engineering type job EPC can be, EPC will be from start to finish, total, up to the construction stage. So the uh, uh, the engineer has to understand the different types of projects and uh, how the PNIDs, uh, different divisions involved in the PNIDs, etc. Now feed engineering can be, uh, engineering can be feed engineering, a feasibility study, pre-feed, BDEP, feed engineering or detail engineering. So all of these engineering involved. Uh, different uh, stages of PNID. I'll be showing that as we go along in the upcoming slides. So, for example, in the uh, feed stage, a vendor information is not available, so is uh, always kept on hold. In the detail engineering, you cannot keep anything on hold once it goes to construction. Issued for construction drawing should not have any holes. Whereas for a feasibility study, uh, PNID may not even be developed. For example. A project can be greenfield, brownfield. Here also, I will elaborate what are the different nuances which the process engineer has to understand uh, and how the PNID is influenced by this. Now, structure of a EPC contract, just quickly we'll cover. Uh, the EPC contract is a lump sum contract in which the contractor takes a lot of risk involved in the in the uh, his uh, bid for the quotation. And once awarded, uh, whatever price he has fixed, within that price his project has to be completed. Else, if, it, if he overshoots the uh, project cost, that is his loss. If he saves on the cost, that is his savings. So in the EPC contractor, here he is directly awarding to all the suppliers, purchasing from suppliers, other contractors, like for example, uh, site erection contractors, ENI, civil contractors, mechanical and piping contractors, all of these are directly under the EPC contractor umbrella and the EPC contractor awards contracts directly. Owner is not involved in this activity once the vendor list etc. has been finalized. Now, in the EPC contract, the uh, uh, how the PNID is uh, differing, I'll just explain. Uh, what has been finalized in the budgetary uh, stage, uh, pre bid, what has been finalized in the PNID, that has to be engineered further on. It has to be fit for purpose PNID. You cannot have too much gold plating once the order has been awarded to EPC contractor. PNID, gold plating and changes etc. has to be minimized as far as possible by the process engineer in charge of the EPC contractor process so that the cost does not overrun as was estimated in the pre bid stage. So this is the EPC contract and how it influences the PNID of the process engineer. In EPCM as can be seen, the owner is responsible for placement of orders on all the suppliers, construction contractors or the contractors and the EPCM contractor is right hand man of the owner as seen in the photograph. So here the risk factor is very less on the EPCM contractor and that is why in the EPCM project only man hours are the 
sufferings of the APCM contractor. So uh, the risk is uh, minimized. And if the owner wants to change the PNIDs, yes, definitely. Uh, one can ask for a change order for the man hours and effort. However, the cost directly is borne by the owner. So that is a major difference. So some amount of coal plating and changes can be accepted by the EPCM contractor, unlike a EPC bid. Now, greenfield versus brownfield. So here how the PNID is influenced because we are topic is on PNID today. So as can be seen, a greenfield type of project is where there is vegetation on the site, grass, etc., which has to be cleaned away, cleared away, leveled, and then the new plant has to be erected. So that means everything is procured new, and hence this is a vast difference from the brownfield project where there are some complexities. For example, you may have to demolish certain portions of the plant in order to erect a new plant and hence the process engineer PNIDs may have a demolition PNID as well as a new time PNID. Okay. Plus existing utilities need to be checked for adequacy in a brownfield project and uh, maybe if an existing has to be used, tie-in will come to the existing utilities. However, the adequacy has to be checked for flow rate, pressure, temperature, etc. And also, if a new has to be procured, then that has to be engineered new also for a brownfield, that particular utility. So there are many uh, 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 complications in a brownfield. Uh, which influence the PNID in uh, many ways.